We are down to one final field of corn that we want to get planted. It's only 115 acres right now. We are waiting on fertilizer from the co-op. That's going to be a couple hours yet. And then we'll run the digger over it, come back and plant it, and I hope I'm going to be running the storm today. We had a couple of small pieces that we wanted to hit with the ripper, so I had to take the Mendeco off this 8360. We put the ripper on it just for a couple days, so now we gotta make the old swaparoo again. Good? I've got Dwight from Mendeco themselves following me out to the field. We're just going to go up the road a mile here and unfold this thing and see what it does. He's going to make sure I've got everything figured out and make sure. Got to wave at the girls. They're standing out there. Beautiful day for them to be out running around. It's a turkey. The amount of times you see one individual turkey running around in our fields around here is rare. The people down south probably laugh at that, guys. I know you guys got turkey all over the place, but we don't see them that often around here. They're around, but when I was young, there were zero. When we were in high school, they started to show up when I was in high school. We're gonna hop out here, take a look at the job it's doing. This tractor, it doesn't have extra power for pulling it, at least at the depth that we've got it. This is a 27 foot wide model, so we're gonna see how deep we're going here and see what we wanna do. Three inches or four? Plenty of moisture out here yet, isn't there? Yeah, this is fairly moist. I'm looking at the roots coming out. Do you think, I think we should go an inch shallower Okay. Half inch to an inch shallower. Okay. See if we can get more speed out of it. Okay. We're running about uh, seven and a half, so if we can shallow it up a bit and speed up, maybe that'll maybe that'll be the ticket. And these uh, baskets back here are designed just to break up the lumps a little bit. We've got them in float, so they're just riding along to level it off nice. The other thing we can adjust here if we want would be the gang angle, so those actually adjust separately, the front to the rear, so. You can set it from zero to 14 degrees and you can set them independently. Right now we're running seven degrees on both of them. So we've kind of split the difference. We can play with that some and see what happens. Oh yeah, that's a little sticky there. <laughs> you can see the difference where the residue wasn't laying. If I had known that this wouldn't get tilled last fall, what I probably would have done is shut the gearboxes off on our chopping corn header and then we wouldn't have this mat of residue laying there that the sun can't get through and the field could dry up a lot better because this is definitely holding a good amount of moisture in there. That's fairly sticky. But it's supposed to rain at about five o'clock in the morning tomorrow. We got 140 acres here. So we really want it done now. If we can get it done now and then get a rain on it. That'll help this stuff rot away a little bit. We can come back and hit it again with this machine right before we plant. That's our ideal hopes. Well now we've got our nine miles per hour out of it like we wanted. And I think speed's kind of the ticket with these things, isn't it? Yep. Give it a check again now that we've adjusted things and we're traveling a little bit faster. It goes at nine mile an hour set like this on the flatland, but if you get a hill, it's still struggling a bit. About right, you think? About three inches. Right around three inches, he says, yeah. It's definitely doing a nice job of chopping the stuff. Dwight, I think I'm gonna take a little gang angle out of it and okay. see what it does. Okay. Drop it down to four or five and just see what it does here. Okay. There's a lot of moisture here, so I don't wanna be forcing yep. too much compaction or anything. If we could just fly through it, fluff the top so that it dries faster after the rain. Yep. So we've got a control box mounted up here. This is just an electrical control box that controls my number two or three hydraulic. That way I can adjust those angles individually. So there's a lot more angle. Let's see, I'm gonna go, that should be zero. Yeah. That about four? Yeah. That's pretty, let's see here. 
That's about six. About six? Okay. There. We're looking at the white markers here. They got little placards on them to show the settings. Oh, you can feel the horsepower now. We're going downhill, but a it'll difference. big difference, yeah. Dwight, I'm already seeing a problem. What's that? If I mount a GoPro hanging underneath the frame there, I think it's going to knock it off. A what? A GoPro camera. Oh. Uh, it's yeah. a significant problem for a farmer like me. Right, right. I get it. All right, I'm going to run out there and see what this thing did with less angle to it. As I mentioned, we can go from 0 to 14. We just dropped it down from about 7 down to 3 to 4-ish. Still chopping good and opening the tops up. It's not really burying the residue, which I'd like to keep a little residue on top, but this might be more than I want. We adjusted it up a little bit higher so it's not going quite as deep, and we're also going to adjust now the angle of the harrow back here, or the drag, whatever you want to call it, so that hopefully the corn stalks will bunch a little bit less. It might not leave it as smooth, but we're going to hit this at a straight angle when we come back and plant anyway. So I'm not too worried about leaving it smooth right now. I just want to be able to chop things up and just open that top inch or two so that it hopefully dries out quicker after the rain coming. And that just adjusts right here. You pull the pin. We're going to go there. Is that the where you set the other ones? Yep. The fourth hole? Yep. Okay. Thanks, Dwight from Mendeco. Machinery for beat. Quite a number of reasons, but uh, fun fact, he's a local boy for me. Grew up 30 miles south of us. What is that? Somebody caught themselves a fox in some type of a foot snare trap on our property and didn't come back for their trap or their fox. That's a new one. Everything seems pretty dialed in here. There's a lot of adjustments on this thing, but I kind of seem to have it where I like it. I wish I could get a little more speed out of it. Unfortunately, we need that other tractor to be on the digger, the field cultivator this afternoon for a field that we need it on. So this is our only option right now, but I'm doing between eight and nine most of the time. But I got it dialed in. It's, it's probably a good time for a montage. Hello. Hi there. I'm still getting used to going 10 miles an hour with everything. Oh. Toodles! Well, so far dad even likes it so that's a good sign he's gonna head back it sounds like they're spreading fertilizer on that last cornfield right now he's gonna head back get the digger going and then Jim's gonna come take over for him and hopefully pretty soon I will head out take the planter over so I can chase the digger dad will probably move up and finish this field take over for me and then we'll just work as long into the night as we have to it sounds like rain's coming about 5 6 a.m. we should be done with everything we really want to be by then if not We'll go till 5 or 6 a.m. Sometimes your job gets stolen and you get the hard seat to sit on. I'm a big guy, I don't like this seat. That buddy seat is crap compared to the new fancy tractor. 10 4. I'm going to finish just a couple, a couple skip passes here and fill those in and then I'll head home. Okay, yeah, that's no problem. That one or that one? Well, you can do whichever one you choose. You're the pilot in command. Okay, I'm gonna go to the right then. Your right or my right? Uh, You're my their right. right. My right. Who's right? Mine's right. I'm always right. <laughs> See what I did there? You left it in the ground? Oh boy, I did. Didn't I? You did. How dare you? <laughs> Speed back. <laughs> hey Owen Hill, happy 16th birthday. I heard your DMV is shut down. That's a bunch of bogusness. Toodles! <laughs> Toodles. She uses different seat settings than I do. It's like she, she's lighter and prettier and smarter. 
Certainly smells a lot better. As long as I've got it folded up, I'm gonna look over things, make sure everything looks like it's working well. We're three quarters of the way done with this field. I'm gonna head a mile down the road and actually do the end rows with this thing and then get the planter going. Jim's running the digger there. They got fertilizer on it. The day is moving along. Uh-huh. I like how it looks here. I did notice the mud that doesn't build up in the baskets is built up a bit here because it's got the bearings inside here instead of out on the ends, which isn't a bad deal, especially considering that's the same bearing as what they run on the actual disc blades up there. So that's kind of handy. I mean, it's not falling apart yet. Oh no. Flat tire. Five, I'm coming down the road now. Do you want me to do all the ends? And then I suppose he'll, he'll be turning on them with the digger afterwards. Yeah, either way, I guess it wouldn't take that long. Just go around the whole thing a couple of times and see what kind of job it's doing. That's what I think. Uh, we, where I was at yesterday with the digger when we were burning it, it pulled a lot of crash up. And I think the VT might do a better job. It's definitely a little dustier around these here parts and a lot busier. Obviously right here we've got a spot where it's always too muddy. We don't get a lot of crop here. I'm really surprised. This thing's still leaving ruts, but it's just wet there. But I'm surprised at how well it does in the mud. That's the big reason why discs are never used around here. Our soil is just so sticky. You can't get it to quit from plugging because the, the, the disc gangs or the discs themselves just plug up with mud. I took some angle out of this thing and I'm trying to drive a lot faster, but this tractor is kind of, I wonder if I take it out of man, or out of, it's having a shift fit. There, I learned something new. I switched the transmission out of full auto and into manual because trying to drive at 10 miles an hour with an underpowered tractor, it continuously shift back and forth. This works a lot nicer, much easier on the tractor. I think I'm gonna play with that on the 8RX some tonight, see if I can get it to shift smoother because that's a little bit jumpy sometimes when it needs power too. I found it here, both of you drove right over the top of it. That is why it's important to not eat the flags with the combine. This is a tile inlet here to help drain an area of the field that doesn't make good crops. And there used to be a flag there marking it. But I chewed it up with the combine last fall. It looks fine. The cage on it was crushed already, so we just need another flag and put a new cage on it anyway. Eating up tile flags with the combine. It's hard to find good help. Well, I'm home. You okay? Are you working on this puzzle, Isla? No. What are you working on? Play-Doh. Oh, Play-Doh, that looks fun. Supper time, Isla. <laughs> I'm gonna eat this in the tractor. Rhiannon, what are you busy doing? Watching TikTok. Watching TikTok, you got a phone and an iPad going? Onyx? Yeah. Are you in the middle of a heavy Fortnite game? Yep. Jeez. How you doing? Bluetooth! Kicked in right away. It's nice to be in a shiny tractor like this that isn't so wrinkly like that last one. <laughs> Lots of people are asking with a 16 row planter now, what are we gonna do with a 12 row corn head? Are we gonna get a 16 row corn head, an eight row, what's gonna happen? Now we're gonna keep the 12 row corn head as far as I know, uh, but it's just, it's just gonna be a little bit difficult because we will have some gaps and some narrows. That's part of the reason why there's an additional satellite receiver on the back of the planter there. I've got one on the tractor, one on the planter. Um, they are communicating to each other. So the planter is basically listening to the tractor, did I say that right or wrong? The tractor is listening to the one in the planter and the planter is controlling what the tractor does 
and then between the two they are compensating for the planter drift that way hopefully our 30 inch spacing ends up correct over there every time so we're going to keep the same 12 row header and uh i'm sure there will be some some moments this fall where i'm upset with myself for getting off between the rows but it is what it is ideally we would have had a 24 row planter here a 60 foot wide planter like we own but you know we couldn't get that in time we had to go with the 40 footer because by the time deer and i decided we were going to do this uh, this is what was available and so i didn't want to pass up the opportunity to to showcase this tractor and this planter to you guys and to have the opportunity to run it for myself so this is what we ended up with and uh you know what i'm not going to complain about it that's for sure so my good buddy neil and his wife own a firearm company called red x arms i'm having them build me a little toy and i just got this from them isn't it beautiful i went with the creedmoor round 20 inch barrel three and a half pound two stage trigger mag pool buttstock yeah but i think right now we got 10 days yet and it'll still be in really good shape to plant it we won't be able to get the planter ready for beans if it rains but that's not that big a deal i'd much rather have that than a poor field yeah well i got a couple tiny rounds here in the corner that i may as well finish off and keep an eye on it but i i just it's not it's not good out here yeah i say leave it all right well i'll let yeah. you know what i do i'm gonna shut this thing down and go outside and show you guys what the problem is here this field was corn last year and it didn't get tilled last fall so it sat with that thick heavy mat of residue on it exactly like the field i was in earlier running that mendeco vt tool the difference here is that we burned this field yesterday because yesterday it was dry it was hot it was windy burning conditions were good we wanted corn on this we're not planting beans here so we wanted to get that that residue off because corn loves the heat right now and we needed this field to be dry. So we burned it yesterday and the reason we didn't work it right away yesterday was because, thank you watch, was because we couldn't get fertilizer until today. And once we got fertilizer, we wanted to till the soil to incorporate that into the soil, to get the fertilizer underneath the soil where it's safe down down inside the dirt. The problem we ended up with is we couldn't get the co-op out here quickly enough to get fertilizer on it. As you saw just a little bit ago, they were out here putting fertilizer on not long ago. Jim just finished digging this field as I was pulling into it. So the top of this hasn't had a chance to dry. This is by far the wettest field we've had all spring, and it's because of that thick heavy mat of residue that didn't get tilled under last fall. It didn't get tilled, it didn't get a chance to dry out, it wasn't open, it couldn't get the air and the sunshine to dry out. I know a lot of farms depend heavily on irrigation and they always wish they had more water. Not us. Up here we typically have too much water and not enough heat to get rid of it. We don't irrigate anything, we have too much water. And we have beautiful, beautiful, heavy black soil that is extremely sticky. And the problem with that is that it sticks to these wheels very badly and then it sticks to these wheels and then the problem we get is we can't close our seed trenches we can't close the seed trenches we can't get a consistent depth to the seed it's inconsistent it picks up the mud it's just not it's not right it's not good for the soil it's not good for the seed not good for anything this is our last hundred acres of corn and it is going to rain tonight, pretty much for sure. So it's very disappointing to not be able to finish corn today. But we have had a phenomenal spring so far. Everything's gone so well. I'm gonna park this thing and we're gonna let it rain and we will come back when this field dries up then. Uh, maybe we'll switch to beans and do some of that first. I don't know, we'll decide that later, but I'm gonna have to pull the plug on this for tonight. It's unfortunate, I'm bummed out. Um, I was going to sit in that thing until 1 in the morning and finish this up right around 1 o'clock. But it is what it is. Remember, if you guys can get me to 500,000 subscribers by May 5th, I will donate $5,000 to the farm rescue organization that helps out farm families during the times of crisis. Not only will I donate five grand, but so will John Deere. 
John Deere works closely with Farm Rescue all the time. They do a lot together. This is another $5,000 from them and five for me that we can throw on top of that organization that does great things. So far, the traction that I've gained in subscribers from that is phenomenal. So again, thank you guys. Let's get to 500,000. And even if we don't, you know, it's all in good fun. So thank you guys so much for watching. Millennial Farmer, out. One last thing. I know a bunch of you are going to go, well, he planted the whole end rows, and then he figured out that the field was too wet and too muddy. The end rows got ripped. They got tilled a couple of weeks ago when we got that top inch of frost and I had the ripper out when I got that RT stuck. That's how much difference it made. Those end rows were dry. They were fluffy. They dried out. They planted beautifully. As soon as I got to the rows where it hadn't been tilled until today, it was too sticky, too muddy. It just is what it is.